Every year, over 100 million people go through passport control to get into Britain. Most are welcome and legal. Many are not. For the first time on television, we go behind the scenes with the UK Border Agency, the men and women on the front line of immigration. Tonight, the chicken factory full of illegal workers. Police! Everybody stay calm! Everybody stay very, very calm! Rush hour at Calais. Brings human traffic jams. Okay. Three times in, what, five, ten minutes? Busy morning here. And raising the bar at Heathrow. A law student struggles with an immigration test. Explain to me why you don't have a return ticket. I don't have any intention of staying here. I, I didn't ask out the question. I said, why do you not have a return ticket? At 8am, the port of Calais, France. Hundreds of lorries are preparing to board ferries bound for Britain. But some have unwanted cargo. Illegal immigrants trying to get into the country. An Anglo-French deal in 2004 allowed UK immigration teams to be based on French soil for the first time. Their aim, yes. to stop the clandestines, no, as they call them. Yeah, let's find it back. And it seems clear, this one. Officer Bridget McCarthy has been stationed here for over four years. You got your passport handy? She has a special tool adapted from a ski pole that detects breathing. Much. This is a CO2 probe, and in plain English, anything in there that's breathing will be picked up. And so we'll get readings. What you have to do on here is watch how the readings fluctuate and what levels. We know what limits we go to, and if we want the vehicle open, as we class it to be a high CO2 reading, we get the driver to open it up. They find most clandestines here in the search bays. But there's a report in of a lorry that's not been checked here, and is now just metres away from boarding a ferry. Right, we're going down to the berth. We've had a call to say that ECS have had a find of five inside a vehicle. The clandestines could be just moments away from boarding. Oh, they'll be distraught. <laughs> Bless them. Yeah, they'll be distraught. Especially when they, they think they're so close. The team work closely with the French. Bonjour. Bonjour. Handing anyone they catch into their custody. Players? Uh, driver? Driver. They think they're hidden deep inside this lorry load of tyres. How far down are they? We don't know. I'm going to get some ladders and get up there. Can you just do a registration check for me, please? But they're in there somewhere. They're in there at the back there somewhere, yeah. Five, we think. No one has a ladder. Only one way in. You don't mind? By all means, yeah. I'll hold the gear then. You two, let's get in there. Good, strong men. Up for there, Dave. We will get um, a ladder for him. Just tell him to stay there one minute. What nationalities do you think we've got, Toff? Uh, Indian. 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 Yeah. One, two, three. Got at least six people up here. There you Excellent. Go. Buried amongst the tyres, the immigration officers have found more than they first thought. OK, he speaks English. This guy here speaks English. Seven Indian men. Still shot. You know, basically right at the very bottom. How they got down there and how they ever think they're going to get out. Is Hello, guys. Yeah. You OK? <laughs> Where'd you get in, in Belgium? Belgium? Belgium. Ah, Belgium. Yeah. How long have you been in? How long? This morning. Yeah, what time? And you haven't got any documents on you guys? No passports? No papers from the French? Oh. How can you get to England with no passports? Yeah, be careful. That's it. Excellent. It's not very nice. The, the load's very, un, you know, uneven. They're all over the place, and uh, we've got to do it care for these guys, so we've got to get them down as soon as possible. Just stand there for me, good man. Yeah, the sailing, by all accounts, is off at 8.45 um, British time. So I don't know, I've not got a clue what the time is now, but as you can see, the ferry's coming in. Um, they're 
They're 150, 200 yards away from getting on the boat. Look, guys, look. So close. But there's little time to hang around. How many in the other load? Six, I think. Six yeah. Indians? Another report of more clandestines. On another lorry that's also about to board. Sure, we're just we're waiting just to confirm gonna... on the yeah. lane number. So we're going to leave this vehicle and head over here now and sort this one out as well. OK. While the Indian men are taken to a holding room, the team are going full steam ahead. Bad morning. All, all kicks off at 20 past eight. Coming up, the chicken factory employing illegal workers. Is there anybody here that's British? Officer Lomas gets suspicious at Heathrow. And the family who risked their lives trying to trick the breathing detectors. So they will actually put um, plastic bags over their heads. It's 8.30 a.m. and it's all go in Calais. Bonjour. Officer Bridget McCarthy and her team have already found seven clandestines, metres away from boarding a ferry to Britain. Now another close call. Clandestine cargo that's ready to board. We've just been called to another find here with Eritreans and we're going to deal with that now. She got up, two, three, four, five, six. She got offloaded. What we've got here is Eritrean National. Um, they're not great, they're not compliant at all. So um, they won't be like your Indians that we've had. Hello, sir. Thank you. Uh, that's seven, this will be eight. Name 105. Yet more calls come. There's been another find. We've just been told that there's another positive in lane one, so we'll have to deal with these and uh, we'll move on to the next one. Very busy morning. The team are stretched, but they won't leave until every inch of the lorry has been searched. That's it. Yeah, man. How are you doing? Their persistence pays off. OK. Stay there. Don't stay there. Thank you. I think the hat might stay be there. away. Stay there, come on. The first vehicle over there with the tyres, is unstable to move back. We're trying to get it tied up as best as possible and we will be taking that back. Good man. The same thing will happen with this vehicle here. We've just been given another call to go to lane one. Green vimes in, what, five, ten minutes? Busy morning here. In total, they found 15 people in the last 15 minutes. And outside the port, hundreds more ready to take their place, in search of work with British employers who are ready to break the law by hiring illegal immigrants. Companies who flout immigration law can be found all over Britain and they're not confined to the big cities. In the Midlands, over 70 law enforcement officers are preparing to raid a chicken factory they suspect are employing illegal immigrants. It's 10 a.m. at the briefing for this massive operation. We've received information which has been assessed by the UKBA and the police that's identified up to 70 foreign nationals who are immigration offenders or suspected of being as such. Immigration officers have teamed up with the police, the Human Trafficking Centre and other government agencies. They're after illegal workers and their employers. And bringing people in from former Soviet Union countries by providing with them false by providing them with false documentation is offering them new identities. They're preparing for tough conditions. The chief immigration officer has been on hundreds of enforcement raids, some more dangerous than others. It'll actually be me that enters the uh, production floor and basically instructs all the workers to put their uh, knives down. 
We've seen approximately 58 employees enter the premises this morning. For every illegal worker, the uh, employer could face a fine of up to £10,000. to search of these premises today. Stay back! Police! Police officers, everybody stay where you are! Everybody stay where you are! Stay where you are! Everybody stay calm! Everybody stay very, very calm! The first job is to make the factory safe. Each worker has a razor-sharp knife, a necessary tool of the trade, but a potential hazard on an operation like this. OK. Yeah, just at the minute, we're securing the premises to make sure all the officers are safe. And that means getting rid of all the knives and putting all the subjects to the left and right of the building, and nothing can happen in the spur of the moment, basically. OK, is there anybody here that's British? If you are, then could you put your hand in the air? If you're British, put your hand in your app in the air. Nobody British. The immigration team has a lot to search. They have to be fast and careful. United Kingdom Border Agency! Officer Carl Mason secures the top floor to seal off possible escape routes. Excellent, fantastic. Can you take this uh, seat for me, please? I am. I'm just going to get my coffee and go for a fag OK, meet. well, <laughs> you're going to have to stay in here for the time being. Basically, what's happening now is the outer cordons aren't stopping anybody running away. We're sweeping downstairs, which is going to be the, the hardest bit because you've got all the workers down there, and we're just sweeping these offices. I'm not going anywhere, don't That's OK, me. no worries. Just trust me. <laughs> I'll trust you implicitly. Andy, if you can just identify whether there's anyone British over there. On the ground floor, the Chief Immigration Officer and his team are trying to establish the workers' nationalities. But everybody on the uh, production line is a foreign national, as far as you're aware. Nine. All right, thanks very much. Nine. You stop there, fit in there for me, okay? It would appear that every single worker bar one is a foreign national. So the next thing that we'll be looking to do is try and identify which ones of those come from an EU country. Because again, they'll be not, not be subject to uh, immigration control. So, where are you from? What country? What country are you from? Con what country are you from? Afghanistan, Iraq? No, no understand. Nationality? Romania? Keep moving down, please. The chief has his own method of finding information. And did you all move up from London together then? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Play the nice guy. What sort of jobs did you do in London? Security. Oh, right. <coughs> so totally different then. Yeah, at the end of the day, if um, we don't come across to forceful then more often than not they'll, they'll just have a chat with us and uh, we can get a lot more information that way. What made you come and work for a chicken company then? I didn't know that. You didn't know? What, what were you told you were going to come and do? Just to take care of chicken, that's it. Oh, so you thought you'd be feeding them? <laughs> I think they're a bit past feeding now. <laughs> Uh, he was promised a job up here. That is quite um, important to us in that there are several allegations that maybe people are employed by this company. Some are given to believe that they'll be doing different types of work to what they actually end up doing. Back upstairs, Carl Mason's team have found rooms which you wouldn't expect to find in a chicken factory. Hello, sir. Back rooms which look like they would have been chilled freezer units, chiller units, uh, been used as accommodation for Obviously, it's people who are working on site. And just looking at the rooms, like, they're clearly not intended for this. They're... They find four small rooms, each with two beds, personal items, and other material. What appears to be sort of counterfeit pornographic DVDs, depictions of bestiality. Uh, so, I mean, they're clearly 
illegal, so on police advice, they're going to be seized and disposed of. So far, the operation is posing more questions than answers. 69 people turned up to work here this morning, many of them suspected of being illegal workers. Back at Calais, and the morning rush hour shows no sign of slowing up. So we've had Indians, Eritreans. Yeah. What do you think we got here? This time, a more unusual find. Hiding in the cargo, an entire Vietnamese family. Hello. Hello, you speak English? Uh, any passport documents? Is it a family? Thank you. Family, yeah? All family. Yeah. In this particular load, we've got five Vietnamese, three are female. So when the escort team come, we'll get them out as soon as possible, we'll get them into detention where they're safe. The family had obviously heard about the breathing detectors. They had a plan to try and deceive them. A dangerous plan. So they will actually put um, plastic bags over their heads, risk their own lives, you know, in order to get to the UK. It's tragic, really, and but it happens, and you can see it here. Day in, day out, we see it. You think you're wrapped in that bit of plastic and your head's covered as well. Your oxygen and whatever else isn't going to last very long. Do you want to just jump down for me? Excellent. Oh. That's fine. Sir, wait there, wait there. No problem, stay here with me. No, no air holes in that at all. They're just full of air. I, I mean, this, this lady obviously looks quite drained and tired looking, doesn't she? So I think she's obviously suffering from the effects of not having much oxygen by being wrapped in one of these. Well, I think they actually board. This lorry was just about just to there. go on. That's where they go on. If you can see, you've got um, one just going down there now. So they, they were so close, so, so close to getting on. And another call comes through. People have been found on a boat. Not a ferry, but smaller and faster. In the search bay is a truck carrying expensive yachts and stowaways. The chief immigration officer sends his crew inside. Uh, you can clearly see how they've actually got into this, this load. They've just basically slit the back um, and they've actually got inside the main body of the boat. All right. There's four in there at the moment, but there could be more. And obviously, we're going to have to search the ones on the back of this trailer as well. Hi there. You all right? OK. Come out there. Right, what I want to do is make sure this ladder's secure when they get down. OK. You be careful. Hi there. Oh, Ooh. careful. Mind your head. OK. Around 50 ferries leave the port of Calais every day. Each one an opportunity to reach British soil. Uh, one and a half hours, yeah. 31 yeah. found in, in six separate yeah. finds. Yeah. Different locations, so... Uh, I think your team and our team are working very hard this morning. Yes, yeah, a good job. There were 31 clandestines found in two hours. They were handed over to the French police. Their whereabouts now is unknown. It's time to process the workers at the chicken factory. Yeah, that's fine. Of 69 employees, 68 will be questioned about their nationality and their rights to work here. This is your last, last one? No, that's a good one. Uh, we've counted about 30 people that have admitted not being EU nationals. However, we have a lot of subjects that are Romanian, Bulgarian, and uh, when they joined the EU, certain restrictions were put on their employment. They couldn't just come and work like a Spanish person can. Uh, they have to have registration cards to work. So what will be interesting now on the question upstairs will be 
have you got the relevant documentation to work legally in the UK? On big operations like this, the officers confiscate personal items like mobile phones. Yeah, basically we've had instances where people have used, we've allowed people to use a mobile phone in a factory or a house. And what they've done, they've called the friends uh, or protest groups and they've come round and basically it's caused an, a major incident where we've got protesters outside the house preventing us getting anybody out, we've arrested. All the foreign workers are kept under close guard in the canteen. We were going to have ten at a time, weren't we? So we need some more, we need some more, don't we? In the corridor next door, they set up a makeshift office to interview the workforce. With their mobile fingerprint machines and some interpreters, the detective work begins. Illegal immigrants will be arrested and face being removed from Britain. But who will stay and who will be leaving? Coming up, the heat is on at Heathrow. It's not looking good, all right? I won't lie to you. Suspect students and damning diaries. He's not even mentioned his studies once, as far as I can see. It's all about money and earning money. But who's telling the truth at Terminal 3? An identity crisis at the chicken factory as dialogue breaks down. So we'll start again and we'll start slowly. This is your one and only chance for you to tell me the truth. In the Midlands, immigration officers are onto something big. They've raided a chicken factory and apprehended 68 foreign nationals, all being closely watched in the canteen. The next phase is to check names and ID against the Home Office database to see who is working here legally or otherwise. So far, they've found 14 different nationalities and interpreters are in short supply. Yulia, there's no point in trying to tell uh, untruths about your situation. There's nothing to be frightened about. OK. So what basis have you asked to stay in the UK? The stakes are high. Illegal workers face being removed from Britain. Your immigration status in the UK, why, why have you came to the UK? Officer Andy Watt questions a Romanian. To understand him, she has an interpreter. So you have no national insurance card, no? Romania is new to the EU and has restrictions on it. She's allowed to be here but requires a registration card in order to work. Next question is, how many hours do you work here every week? OK, can I ask you, how much are you paid here per hour? So I don't know how much is per hour, but it's per week. 200, 250 per week, yeah? She says she's been earning between 200 and 250 pounds a week and working 50 to 60 hours. This is less than a legal minimum wage. But if she hasn't got a registration card, she faces a hefty penalty. Are you, are you paying a debt off to anybody for coming to the UK? No? OK. Has your, uh, your employer here ever threatened you in any way? Upstairs in the factory's makeshift bedrooms, officers are searching the workers' belongings. They've already found fake ID cards and arrests have been made. They discover the woman being paid below the minimum wage is Romanian, but she doesn't have a worker's registration card. 
Yes. Because you're from Romania. Okay. Certain restrictions are put on Romanian nationals working in the UK. Okay. And as such, you should have a work permit, a registration card to be in the UK. Okay. Now, there's a penalty notice for you working illegally in the UK. <laughs> okay. And the penalty amount that you'll be fined is a thousand pounds. Okay. The fixed penalty will go on your name, your date of birth and your nationality. That will be you, okay? So if you give me any wrong details on your postcode or address, it doesn't matter to me, okay? The penalty goes on your name and it will follow you about until you sort that penalty out. She's free to go and will be able to work legally as long as she gets the right papers. The canteen is full of people waiting to be interviewed. Some less worried than others. Heathrow Airport, the main gateway into Britain. Officer Steve Hassler has the job of sorting out the genuine tourists from those who want a permanent holiday. So it's your fault. Okay. This woman is claiming to be a visitor, but she's been flagged up on the database as having been refused entry to Britain in the past. We understand why we have to do this, because you've, you've had that previous refusal. And it's always going to cause problems, unfortunately. She's no stranger to Britain. She went to school here for well, four years, I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're until her father's now, work okay. permit was cancelled and her family were removed. Anything to, to declare to customs? Nothing, no, like, thousand cigarettes or oh, no. nothing like that? OK, all right. She's been refused entry, or she was refused entry, back in August of 2007. Her father was here on a work permit. Um, it's a bit sketchy, but it was curtailed back in February of 2007. She claims now she's come here uh, to pick up some certificates, her GCSE certificates, um, from the uh, examining board. She claims that she had sent for them, paid for them, they were sent in the post, but they were never received. The only thing is, she doesn't have a return ticket. Um, why would somebody come on a two-week two visit without a return ticket? That's a little bit strange. Is it Lahore you're from, yeah? Yeah. What do you studying. do there? Studying. Yeah, I'm studying law. Law? Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Immigration law? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm trying to stay away from that. <laughs> OK, don't worry. Nothing personal. No, no, no. That's my university card. Excellent, I'll just borrow that as well. Let me get that back. I don't ah. have any cash or anything. No cash. What about credit card? No credit card? So you've got nothing at all? So how are you going to survive initially? Okay. Your family, friend. <laughs> no, help me out. Her claim to be picking up certificates to take back to Pakistan doesn't quite add up. Well, it's just this fact she's got a single ticket, she's got no money, and she hasn't actually arranged for these certificates yet. You see, I don't get this part because she and her entire family have been refused entry. Okay. okay. They've previously been living here for four years. Yeah. Further to that, they appealed and went down the human rights, human rights line yeah. as well. So they, they're kind of well aware about how things work in the UK. Know how things work. Yeah. So then to send a family member alone on a single ticket with no money, yeah, doesn't stack up. A closer look at her luggage doesn't improve her chances. At the back, I've just discovered some old pay statements. And I've just mentioned, I just went out to the control and spoke to her. I said, well, why have you got these certificates with you? You know, if you're just coming to get... Um, and she said, oh, well, it's just all my docu documentation that I had when I was in the UK. Um, but there's, there's P45s as well. Um, now I'm a little unhappier. Really? Yeah. Because the, these are documents that, really? yeah. that are not necessary at all. Relevant, to in exactly. In Lahore. Exactly. It's question time for the law student. Officer Hassler wants answers. It's not looking good, all right? I won't lie to you, because I can't understand why you've not brought any money with your tickets. We're going to have to come through this way, all right? And the fact of the matter, you've got two pound on you, you've got no credit cards, you've got no return ticket, you've brought other documentation 
which, to be quite frank, you shouldn't have brought with you. I can't understand why you brought it with you. This interview will decide whether or not Officer Hassler returns her on the next flight home. So why did they just buy you a single ticket? I, I, you know, I, I can't fathom this out because why would they buy you a single ticket and also send you their daughter a, halfway across the world with just two pound coins in the purse? I don't have any intention of staying here. I, I didn't ask out the question. I said, why do you not have a return ticket? Because I didn't know what date exactly I would go back. She said she didn't know how long she was going to be here. It was going to be two or three weeks. And I said, well, why didn't you get an open ticket? And I says, we have many times people come here. And she says, oh, yeah, I found about that on the aircraft. I hadn't heard of open tickets. She didn't know about open tickets? Didn't know about open tickets. This is a young lady who's lived in the UK and has clearly travelled. And travelled before, but didn't know about didn't open Didn't know tickets. about open tickets. We get people coming here all the time who are coming as visitors, and if they don't have return tickets, they don't have money, they'd just be refused. It's not credible. You're coming here as a visitor, but yet, you know, there's no, you've got no evidence of support whatsoever. You said that you're going to come here, um, get these GCAC certificates, mm -hmm. but yet you've come with all this documentation. And it, you would need that sort of stuff if you want to settle here. You've even got your, na well, you know, you're shaking your head, but in your wallet you had your national insurance card, which you had your national insurance number in. Why would you bring that to the UK? I just bought my wallet with me. But then we start going into things like her, her previous bank statements here, um, mobile phone accounts, um, in previous interviews with Job Centre Plus. Certainly with regard to her documentation, she has literally packed up everything, put it into a folder. It's as if she's picked up her life. And brought it here. Brought it here. And I think we've got, to, we've got to remember this. I mean, the family had lived in the UK since 2002. The father had been working here. She's had most of her informative years here. Like I said, she's been a student here. She'd got a job. She'd taken her exams. And then all of a sudden, for no fault of her own, the rug's pulled up from under her feet and she's forced back to a country that she probably hasn't lived in for a number of years. Um, and all of a sudden, she's, she's left, you know, thinking, well, where's it all gone? OK. Just want to... Right. The decision is that you're going to be refused entry, OK? Um, you're coming in as a visitor, but you've got all this documentation which pertains nothing to why you want to come here regarding your education. Now, if you want to come back to the UK, you can, but you, what I would advise you to do is get a, a, an entry clearance visa. Okay, you can still go and ask for a visit visa or a student visa, whatever you want to do. But rather than you having to come here and go through all this, it means you go to the embassy, you put all the evidence in front of them and you allow them to make the decision. I feel sympathy for her because I, I know what, it's, what the impact on, on her is going to be. But at the end of the day, we've got to look at what we're doing with regard to you know, the border control and making sure people coming here uh, are coming here for a genuine reason and not ending up doing something else. For this time, I'm afraid you're not going to be allowed in. Tourists to say she's accepting this notification. At the chicken factory, the investigation is in full swing. So we'll start again, we'll start slowly. This is your one and only chance for you to tell me the truth. They're finding more fake documents. Is this a, like a, some sort of joke? And more resistance to the immigration officer's questions. I'm going to say it in English. This lady's going to say it in Romanian, OK? Either way, you'll understand it. If you don't start answering the questions, I'll arrest you. All right. A pattern is emerging. A lot of workers claiming to be from Romania. The immigration team isn't convinced. It's definitely a trend here in that an awful lot of what we believe are Pakistani nationals have produced Romanian identity documents. I'm more Romanian than you. What we'll be seeking to uh, identify is where they got those documents from. Perhaps they're linked to the employer and perhaps they're not. But at the end of the day, that's a lot of uh, interviews that we've got to do to establish whether that's a fact or not. So you say you're Romanian? Yeah. How did you qualify to be Romanian? This man says he's from Romania and his work papers are up to date. Are oh, your mother and father Romanian? Yeah. Yeah. And they were born in Romania, were they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Officer Mason gives the Romanian a simple geography test. OK, tell me which countries are next to Romania. Uh, Moldova. Moldova. Bulgaria. Bulgaria, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Any more? 
There are five countries that border Romania. I won't give you any more details because I don't think it's going to be worth it. And no records of this man's right to work. You are not Romanian. I'm not Romanian. You, I know you're not Romanian. Uh, okay. Yes, I know. Uh, so, what's your nationality? What? Where, where, where are you from? What country? What country? Yeah. Uh, I am not understand. Uh, okay. My English is not in... Your English was brilliant when we started. Do you speak Romanian? Uh, yeah. Right. You wait there. I'll get a Romanian interpreter. Uh, I will get a Romanian interpreter. Are you spy the census tingling? Yeah. Uh, the next test. Can, can he speak here? Romanian to an interpreter on the phone? Explain to him in English. Marion, that gentleman speaks Romanian. You say you're a Ro Romanian. You've only been here one week. Come from Romania. Please speak to him. Hello, sir. Okay, sir, I'm very sorry to have wasted your valuable time yet again. Well, thank you very much for your help. Okay, sir, cheers, thank you, bye. Okay, that's a, a Romanian interpreter. He says you're not speaking Romanian, he says you're speaking, well, nothing really. Marion. I know Marion's not your real name, but let's just stop, all right? Stop all the lies now, okay? I'll give you this one opportunity to start telling me the truth. Where are you from? No, I am. You check identity. Okay, no, no. I'm not bothered about your identity card. You've told me you're Romanian. You can't tell me the capital. You can't tell me what monetary units are used over there, okay? At the moment, all you're doing is getting yourself into trouble, okay? So, what nationality are you? Don't insult me, insult you're Romanian. OK, I believe you've entered the UK illegally. What's going to happen now is my colleague's going to arrest you. You'll be taken to a police station where they'll be interviewed further. Andy, can you arrest this guy, please? Of the 69 employees, 19 were arrested, four have been removed. A further 10 are expected to follow once the paperwork is ready. The employer is fined £60,000. Five were charged with possession of false documents. And the man who claimed to be Romanian has since absconded. Coming up, two passengers, but only one will be allowed into Britain. So you're going to start telling me the truth now, or we're going to keep going around the houses? Heathrow, Terminal 3. Immigration officer Kay Lomas is on the desk screening passengers. Hello, sir. Where are you travelling from today? Uh, from LA. OK. Do you live there? Or... I live there. And what do you do here? I'm a student. Tell me the whole title of the course. Yeah, it says postgraduate. Yes. Certificate Business Administration. Right. It's MA. It's a Master's of Business Administration. Well, th there's a difference between a postgraduate certificate in business administration and a master's in business administration. Which one is it? It's a postgraduate certificate in business administration. Is that a master's course? It's a master's course. It can't be. OK, I got a letter if I'm... Yes. When are you returning to I am quite wary of some students in the UK. As we know, it's very expensive to be a student in the United Kingdom. The fact that he was a bit mixed up about what he was studying, whether it was a master's or a postgraduate certificate, I don't understand why that would be an issue. OK, so we're about to take your photograph. We want to look directly into this camera here for me, please. Officer Neil Newbury is questioning another student whose story doesn't add up. The immigration officer asked you some questions about your course and you did not answer them sufficiently well for him to be convinced that you were studying in the UK. He's already carried out a bag search. 
He found a diary with some revealing entries. He's talked an awful lot about work. And he's not once mentioned his modules, his studying, any of his tutors. He's not mentioned any of them, which is quite strange if you're here to study. Sainsbury's is going down every day. He's doing only two or three days in Sainsbury's. Now he's having to find a second job. Two men, both claiming to be students of business administration. To find out if they're genuine, officers Lomas and Newbury will have to do their homework. Can you tell me what you've learnt in human resource management? What I study. Mm -hmm. What you have studied. There is a two part. One is employee and another one is employer. Yes. Okay. And if something wrong with the employee and employers, they need to advise the like the one HR manager or some HR consultant to get the sorted out these things. And what does the HR, HR manager ma do, do? What is their role? What is the role? Mm -hmm. And where do you study? Oh, Central England. Oh, oh, I have too much. <coughs> uh, you know that I didn't sleep last night. I want to okay. so I forget everything. I don't know. Should I say? So you're saying you can't remember where you sleep, where your college <coughs> no, is? No, I know that. I know. HR rules means for a company, the managing full staff. Mm -hmm. Tell me about financial reporting. A good result for this student. Not so good for this one. OK, I just want to show you something from um, your book in your bag. Dated 18th of February, 2008. Oh, I know you wrote it down, yeah? and see what I've underlined. 18th February 2008, I'm doing only two and three days in Sainsbury's. Now I'm finding a second job. Yeah. So you're going to start telling me the truth now, or we're going to keep going around the houses. Were you working in Sainsbury's yeah, two or three days a week? <coughs> can, can I uh, uh, explain you personally? But not in front of camera, I'm telling you personally. Slowly he started to... Uh, open up to me and um, explain what he's done. His family are in financial difficulty back in India, um, that their house was being repossessed by, by the bank. And I do have some sympathy with him in that situation. It's, it's mainly the enforcement of the rules that we're concerned about, unfortunately. And in this case, you have broken the rules, the immigration rules. So for that reason, your visa is going to be cancelled today. I'm going to return you back to India on the next available flight, which is this evening at 9, 9.25. Officer Newbury's passenger has failed to get into Britain. It's a different story for Officer Lomas. Oh, yes, sir. He's a student. We are going happy to readmit you to the United Kingdom today. Thank you. Right? Thank OK, you so sir, that's OK. Good luck with the rest of your studies and yeah. your job. Yeah, thank you. It's nice when you've done your inquiries and at the end of it you're satisfied with the result and you know that the right thing has been done. He is a genuine student and I'm happy that, you know, that I've done my inquiries and I'm satisfied with that and he can come in. As this case closes, more flights arrive and hundreds more passengers fill the arrivals hall. It's back to the desks of the immigration officers and back to work. <laughs>